This guy faces an attack from the prison gang, but he has some brutal combination of skills. He manages to beat them all by himself. To wrap up the brawl, he drops a heavy weight on the gang leader's neck, breaking it. From that day on, no one in the prison dares to mess with him. After spending 15 years behind bars, he finally secures his freedom, following a bar visit, and some time with the barmaid, he swipes a car. His first stop is at an old friend's place, a cross-dressing hairstylist named Job. When Job questions his unexpected visit, the man requests an address, which leads to a woman he once collaborated with, to steal diamonds from a crime lord named Mr. Rabbit. As tension rises, Job reluctantly discloses Anna's current identity. Her new name is Carrie Hopewell. Armed with the address, the man leaves the salon only to encounter Mr. Rabbit's henchman, Olek, waiting for him. Olek starts shooting, but the man skillfully dodges the gunfire. Swiftly stealing a motorbike, he escapes, leaving Olek empty-handed. The man heads straight to the town of Banshee, taking a moment to unwind at a bar owned by Sugar, a former boxer with eight years of prison behind him. Sugar discovers the man's prison background, and the two celebrate the newfound freedom. Their celebration is interrupted by Lucas Hood, the recently appointed sheriff of Banshee, who will start his duty the next day. While chatting, two thugs enter the bar, threatening Sugar for money. Lucas remains unfazed, irritating the thugs. One thug holds Lucas at gunpoint, but faces unexpected retaliation as Lucas stabs his hand with a fork. As the other thug moves to retaliate, Lucas draws his gun, leading to a standoff. Amid the chaos, our man from prison stands up, attempting to persuade Lucas to let the thugs steal from Sugar. He promises to cover the losses himself. Still seething with anger, Lucas shoves the man aside, sparking a fierce shootout. Reacting to the thug's gunfire, the man counterattacks and manages to disarm him. Despite successfully taking down the thugs, Lucas ends up getting shot twice, leading to his demise. Sugar advises the man to leave, to avoid any trouble for killing the men. The mysterious combat specialist tracks Carrie down at her home, discovering she is married and has two children, Max and Deva. Because of his love for Carrie, the man resolves to start a new life with her. However, Carrie insists he leaves, emphasizing that she's leading a happy life with her family. It unfolds that during their escape from the cops after the theft, the man intentionally diverted the authorities away from Carrie, ensuring her safety. Unfortunately, he got caught, resulting in his 15-year prison sentence. Since Carrie wants him out of her life, the man demands his share of the stolen diamonds. He gets infuriated when Carrie reveals that some Serbians stole the diamonds from her. Distraught, the man comes to the bitter realization that he not only lost the love of his life but also the diamonds, and on top of that, he spent 15 years in prison for nothing. On the flip side, while Sugar loads the dead bodies into the sheriff's truck, the man offers his assistance in burying them. In the forest, the sheriff's phone rings, and the man answers a call from Mayor Dan Kendall, who's yet to meet the sheriff, but hopes to do so tomorrow. Posing as Sheriff Lucas Hood, the man successfully arranges a meeting with the mayor. Despite Sugar's attempts to dissuade him, the new Lucas had seems determined to step into the role of Banshee's new sheriff. After burying the bodies, our fake Lucas had contacts Job, instructing him to hack law enforcement databases and substitute the original Lucas Hood's fingerprints and photo IDs with his own. Job completes the task, and our mysterious man officially assumes the identity of Sheriff Lucas Hood. With nowhere to stay, Sugar offers him a room above the bar. The next day, Lucas meets Mayor Dan, who seeks his assistance in bringing down Kai Proctor, the owner of Proctor Meats. Kai is known for engaging in criminal activities and is willing to eliminate anyone who poses a threat to him. The previous sheriff succumbed to Kai's influence, prompting Mayor Dan to bring in an outsider like Lucas to handle the situation. After briefing him on Kai, Mayor Dan takes Lucas to the old sheriff's department and introduces him to the team. Brock, with a serious demeanor, guides Lucas around the town. During their tour, they come across the local thugs, the Moody brothers, harassing and mocking some Amish men. Lucas swiftly intervenes, putting a stop to the Moody brothers' harassment of the Amish men. A brawl ensues between Lucas and the group, ending in Lucas overcoming them single-handedly. As Cole attempts to strike Lucas with a wooden stick, Kai Proctor, the owner of Banshee's legal and illegal enterprises, steps in to prevent further escalation. Kai introduces himself to Lucas and instructs the Moody boys to assist the Amish man in reloading the wood they had been throwing earlier. As the scene clears, Kai addresses the Amish man as father, 
and apologizes for the unpleasant incident, it unravels that Kai faces challenges with his former Amish family, who have banished him, with some even disowning his existence. Enraged by Cole's disrespect towards his father, Kai summons him to his slaughterhouse and reveals their relationship. Though Cole doesn't know that the old man is Kai's father, Kai knocks him down. He then proceeds to deliver a series of powerful punches to Cole's face, resulting in the loss of his teeth. The next day, Lucas's team assists him in preparing for his oath-taking ceremony. Meanwhile, Job is confronted by Olek, who demands information about Lucas's whereabouts. A confrontation ensues, resulting in Olek holding Job at gunpoint. Initially resistant, Job finally succumbs to torture and agrees to assist the gang members, claiming he needs to retrieve a file from the cupboard. Job enters another room, where he finds a hidden passageway that enables his escape. As soon as he leaves the location, he rotates his pendant, triggering an explosion that engulfs the place within seconds. In the meantime, Kai Proctor extends invitations to influential figures in Banshee for a party, including Carrie's husband, Gordon Hopewell, the district attorney. Carrie is shocked to the core upon seeing Lucas at the event. Away from the gathering, Lucas urges Carrie to open the safe he stole, but she rejects the proposition. Carrie threatens to expose Lucas, however, reminding her of the secret she is hiding from her husband, Lucas prevents her from blowing the whistle. As she departs, Cole attacks Lucas, seeking revenge for Kai's earlier insult and beating. Cole arrives at the gathering, pointing his gun at Kai, ready to kill him. However, before he can pull the trigger, Lucas shoots him from behind, resulting in his demise. Meanwhile, it is revealed that Olek has survived the explosion, and Mr. Rabbit once again instructs him to capture Lucas. The next day, while Carrie is conducting an open house as a realtor, she encounters Lucas, who has found a way to talk to her. He leads her to another room, and they share a moment, until they are interrupted by another realtor. Despite Lucas's lingering feelings for Carrie, she urges him to leave her alone, and never return to the town. At that moment, Carrie receives a call from Deva's principal. He reveals that Deva hasn't attended school once again. Carrie is worried because Deva always bunks her classes, and she doesn't even know where her daughter goes. Simultaneously, we see Deva in her boyfriend Reed's car, accompanied by her best friend, Beatty. Reed takes her to a house in the middle of the woods, which serves as a site for drug manufacturing. The overseer of this operation, Hansen, who works for Kai Proctor, gets too close to Deva. However, when Reed arrives, he has to back off. Hansen then hands over some drugs to Reed and invites him to a party at an Amish farmhouse. Later, Lucas receives a visit from Kai, who attempts to bribe him, as he has done with previous sheriffs to secure their loyalty. Despite Lucas's conman background, he rejects the offer, leaving Kai disappointed. At night, Lucas goes to Sugar's bar, where Sugar warns him about potential retaliation from the Moody brothers for killing Cole. Lucas takes a sandwich and goes outside to eat, only to be confronted by Cole's widow, Kate. She slaps Lucas in the face for her husband's death. Soon, the Moody brothers surround Lucas, ready to take action against him. However, Kate intervenes, asserting that Cole got what he deserved. Still angered at Lucas, the brothers continue to threaten him, prompting Lucas to face them directly. Before any further escalation, Sugar intervenes. He holds one of the brothers at gunpoint, leading them to surrender their weapons. As they depart, the Moody brothers issue a menacing threat to Lucas. They declare that the war between them is far from over, and they will come after him again. Once everyone disperses, Lucas encounters a woman named Rebecca, and the two spend the night together. The next night, an Amish elder approaches Lucas, divulging information about a rave party he learned of from his son. Before leaving, the elder implores Lucas to keep their meeting confidential. He then introduces Lucas to his daughter, who turns out to be none other than Rebecca. The police gear up for a raid on the party. As they prepare, Deva and her friend arrive, looking forward to enjoying the event as VIPs, with Reed serving as the DJ. As the cops reach the location, Lucas takes a direct approach, incapacitating the guards and entering the party. Inside, he encounters Hansen. However, before he can take action, the attendees, including Reed, start experiencing seizures. Lucas calls in his colleagues, and while they handle the situation, he prioritizes helping Deva, who is distraught over her boyfriend. With the situation under control, Lucas shifts his attention to pursuing Hansen. Tragically, Reed doesn't survive. To console Deva, Lucas drops her off at her house. Meanwhile, Kai contacts Hansen, blaming him for the mishap during the drug manufacturing, 
that led to the death of the senator's son, Reed. As punishment, Kai amputates Hansen's finger. After informing him of his mistakes, Kai gives him a mere 60 seconds to run before his unleashed dog attacks him. Despite Hansen's efforts to escape, the dog catches up to him, leading to his demise. Later that night, while Lucas is at the pub, Rebecca approaches him. The two once again spend some time together. As Rebecca exits the bar in a drunken state, Kai, being her uncle, is waiting outside for her. He implores her to stop her reckless behavior. He highlights that it was his own reckless conduct that led to his estrangement from the family. On the flip side, a severely injured woman emerges from the vanity van of the renowned boxer, Damian Sanchez. He was summoned for an exhibition fight as part of a deal between Kai and Kinaho tribe leader Benjamin Longshadow to construct a new casino. The woman is rushed to the hospital, where she discloses the details of the assault by Damien. She says that it was initially consensual, but the situation turned violent as Damien became rough. He kicked and punched her multiple times, until she managed to crawl out of the van. Upon hearing the victim's account, Lucas heads to the location of the exhibition fight with the intent to arrest Damien. However, he and Deputy Siobhan are intercepted by Kai, who has invested money in the fight. Kai suggests waiting until after the fight to make the arrest. Damien's manager, Douglas, also attempts to stop Lucas, but Lucas remains resolute in his determination. He heads straight for the ring and knocks down the referee, attempting to stop him. When he orders Damien to submit to arrest, a fierce ring fight ensues between the two. Lucas lands a powerful punch to Damien's face, causing him to bleed. However, Damien soon showcases his boxing prowess, retaliating with punches, chokes, and even throwing Lucas out of the ring. Undeterred, Lucas grabs a champagne bottle, attempting to overpower Damien. However, the formidable boxer refuses to yield. Both men are left bleeding, yet neither is willing to admit defeat. As Damien makes another assault, Lucas seizes his hand, pulling apart the fingers until the skin tears. The fight concludes with Lucas breaking Damien's arm, rendering him unconscious. Sugar takes the injured Lucas back to the bar, where Kai arrives shortly after. Kai attempts to negotiate a deal with the sheriff, but Lucas makes it clear that he is well aware of Kai's character and has no interest in associating with him. He emphasizes that while he may not despise Kai, he certainly isn't afraid of him. In response, Kai asserts that it is Lucas who should be afraid of him. Meanwhile, Kai's right-hand man, Clay Burton, approaches Douglas and demands the money Kai gave Damien for the fight. When Douglas argues and refuses to return the cash, Clay initially acts calmly. However, he later follows Douglas into the vanity van, teaching him a lesson and retrieving the money bag. Later that night, Mr. Rabbit is in his room when he gets a surprise visit from Carrie. Holding a gun, she forces him to handcuff himself to the bedpost. She throws a bag containing all the diamonds, worth $10 million, stolen by her and Lucas. In exchange, she demands Rabbit to leave her alone. However, since nobody has ever stolen from Rabbit, he remains angry at Lucas and insists on having him too. Carrie inquires if he would let her go if she provides him with Lucas. Rabbit gives his word, smirking as he does. In response, Carrie takes out an injection and sedates Rabbit to prevent him from calling for help. As she collects the diamonds, she kisses Rabbit. It is revealed that Rabbit is none other than her own father. She then goes directly to Lucas and hands over all the diamonds, but in return, she demands him to leave Banshee. Lucas, however, knocks her down, asserting that he won't leave the town under any circumstances. He instructs Carrie to take her diamonds and go home. The next day, when Lucas arrives at the police station, he finds Senator Robert Schumacher waiting for him in his office. The senator is not seeking sympathy. He wants justice for his son. Engaging in the investigation, Lucas calls Deva to the police station and shows her a list of all the town's criminals. He asks her to identify anyone associated with Hansen, who is believed to have gone missing. Deva identifies Arno Weber as an associate of Hansen, leading Lucas and Deputy Emmett to visit the rundown apartments where Arno resides. When one of the criminals attempts to obstruct Lucas, he forcefully slams the individual's head against the wall, making it clear that he won't tolerate further trouble from them. The officers locate Arno, who reveals a severed hand belonging to Hansen. When asked about its origin, Arno discloses that he worked at Kai's slaughterhouse and witnessed Kai and his right-hand man, Clay, feeding Hansen's body parts to their dog. After they left, he managed to obtain the hand. 
He managed to identify the body from a tattoo he carved on Hansen's hand. As evidence, Arno shows Lucas a video capturing Kai and Clay dragging Hansen's body. The video was presented to District Attorney Gordon. Gordon commends Lucas for his efforts, but advises him not to involve Deva in such situations without their consent. Armed with evidence and an eyewitness, Lucas goes to Kai's residence to arrest him for Hansen's murder. Clay attempts to retaliate, but Kai intervenes, agreeing to accompany Lucas to the police station. While en route, a truck collides with their car, sending it off the bridge. It's revealed to be the work of the Moody brothers seeking revenge on Lucas for Cole's murder. They tie Kai's hands to a branch. One of the brothers, Marcus, decides to harm Kai because he is responsible for breaking Cole's teeth. Dex Moody, however, opposes taking action against Kai, as it would lead to a war they cannot afford to start. As Marcus assaults Lucas, Lucas fights back by smashing Marcus's head into Dex's and chopping off Marcus's ear. After incapacitating the two brothers, he faces Dex, who points a pistol at him. Lucas engages in a psychological game, offering Dex a choice. He can take his brothers home, and Lucas will overlook the incident, or they risk ending up dead or arrested for assaulting an on-duty officer. Deputy Emmett arrives, holding Dex at gunpoint. Facing this threat, Dex and the brothers agree to Lucas's terms and leave the area without further trouble. With the situation under control, Lucas successfully takes Kai to the police station, where he is placed under arrest. Later that night, Sugar expresses his desire to be part of the next job, wanting to earn more than what he makes by selling drinks and managing brawls at the bar. Recognizing Sugar's usefulness, Lucas agrees. Subsequently, Lucas encounters Cat Moody on his stairway. After sharing a cigarette, she warns him that the Moody's will persistently come after him. When Lucas questions why she's at his house, she admits she doesn't know. Despite the uncertainty, the two spend the night together. In court, Kai pleads not guilty. Considering the history of failed charges against him, the judge grants him bail. Upon learning about the prosecution's eyewitness, Kai tasks Clay with investigating the matter. Outside the police station, Lucas is greeted by a visitor. Job has arrived in Banshee to collaborate with Lucas on their upcoming venture. That night, Deputy Brock monitors eyewitness Arno at a motel. A sudden knock on the front door prompts Brock to prepare for an attack. However, the wall behind him suddenly explodes. While losing consciousness, Brock witnesses Arno being taken away. As the Spirit Festival begins, a marauding biker gang known as the Kindred enters Banshee. They attempt to harass Carrie, but being the daughter of a crime lord, she is skilled in self-defense. A scuffle ensues, but with Carrie outnumbered, it becomes challenging. Before any harm can be done, Sugar intervenes and orders the bikers to back off. Engaging in the fight, Sugar manages to knock down two bikers. However, a third one strikes him from behind, rendering him incapacitated. As the injured bikers leave the alley, they are spotted by Siobhan, prompting her to investigate the situation. Discovering Tally above Carrie, Siobhan holds him at gunpoint. Seizing the opportunity, Carrie grabs Tally's pistol and removes its magazine. Since Tally refuses to back off, Siobhan is left with no choice but to shoot him. One of the bikers witnesses Siobhan pulling the trigger, putting her on their hit list. Shortly after the incident, the police and paramedics arrive to tend to Carrie and Sugar. Siobhan is visibly disturbed as it's her first time taking someone's life. While her colleagues try to console her, Carrie seeks solace in her husband's arms. Lucas inquires if Brock has any leads on the gang. Brock explains that they are travelers, making it likely they've already left the town by the time they track them down. Within the biker gang, opinions vary on whether to leave the town or stay and seek revenge for their fallen brother. It's decided that they won't depart until Deputy Siobhan is killed. The next day, as Siobhan works, she spots a biker outside the station's window. She rushes to apprehend him, but the biker has already vanished. She attempts to follow, but she discovers that the man has punctured her car's tire with a knife. The Spirit Festival kicks off, and everyone appears to be enjoying the good food, the rally, and the music. However, their happiness is short-lived when the gang suddenly appears, dragging people down the road. Lucas attempts to intervene, but he gets surrounded by other bikers. Amid the chaos, Rebecca attacks one of the bikers with her knife, surprising the Amish women. Before Lucas can apprehend the gang, he sustains injuries, and the bikers manage to escape. In a contentious town hall meeting, the public expresses anger towards the police for failing to safeguard the town. Mayor Dan attempts to pacify them, but it appears to be ineffective. During the discussions, Kai offers to have his private security guards protect the festival, arguing that he has not been found guilty. 
and is not the threat portrayed by Mayor Dan. Lucas rejects his help, asserting that he has the situation under control. Following the meeting, the Amish elders pressure Rebecca to confess her crime to the sheriff. However, Lucas defends her, stating that Rebecca only acted in self-defense and that her actions shouldn't be considered a crime. Later that night, she visits Lucas' place, and the two spend the night together. On the other hand, Siobhan becomes the target of a biker attack. They open fire, breaking windows. As Siobhan confronts them outside, they manage to escape. Some bikers remain behind and set Siobhan's house on fire, causing a blaze that consumes the entire structure. Lucas arrives at the scene to comfort Siobhan. Lucas then meets Kai, who has summoned him for a meeting. Kai reveals that he has already captured one of the gang members and has persuaded the biker to disclose the whereabouts of the others. Aware that Kai expects something in return, Lucas tacitly agrees with the businessman. Armed with police batons, Lucas arrives at the hideout alone. He systematically takes down the bikers one by one, saving their leader for last. Job helps deliver their unconscious bodies to Cleveland, where there is a warrant for their arrest. The following day, Siobhan receives an envelope from her boss containing the kindred's rings. On the other hand, FBI agent Dean Xavier meets with Lucas. The FBI has come across Kai's name several times, and this time, they are interested in the Hansen's murder case with Kai as a suspect. They believe it could be the key to taking down Kai. However, since the chief witness, Arna Weber was taken under Deputy Brock's watch, Agent Dean has been sent to monitor the situation. However, Things take a turn for the worse, when Agent Dean discovers that Hansen's hand and the crucial piece of evidence, the video, have gone missing from the evidence locker. It is revealed that Lucas traded it to Kai in exchange for information about the gang's whereabouts. Recognizing that something more significant is at play in Banshee, Agent Dean requests his superiors to allow him to stay in Banshee to gather more information. The next day brings another problem for Lucas in the form of Wix, a fellow inmate who recognizes him in his sheriff uniform. While Lucas is at home with Kate Moody, he receives a call from Deputy Brock. Brock has apprehended a shoplifter, Wix, who claims to know the sheriff. Panicked, Lucas quickly returns to the police station, but is unable to recognize Wix. It all began when Mr. Rabbit confronted Lucas in prison, questioning why he turned Carrie against him. He made it clear that he wouldn't let Lucas die, and promised to make him suffer. Mr. Rabbit enlisted the help of a man known as the Albino to torment Lucas. Lucas found safety only in solitary confinement and the prison infirmary where Wix worked. It was Wix who took care of him and told him Albino's weakness. In the present day, Lucas takes Wix to a restaurant and gives him $2,500 in exchange for not showing his face again in Banshee. Wix agrees, but before leaving, he wastes all his money in the casino, loses it, engages in a brawl, and ends up back in the cell. Once again, Lucas assists in Wick's bail, covers his dinner expenses, and reminds him of their deal. However, since Wick's has nowhere to go, and has spent two years sleeping on the streets, he sees this situation as an opportunity to earn some money and live a peaceful life. Now, he intends to stay in Banshee, like Lucas, threatening to expose his past if he doesn't comply. However, Lucas and Sugar have different plans. They decide to eliminate Wix, disposing of his body at the bottom of the lake. In a desperate attempt to make things right for her family, Carrie contacts Rabbit and informs him that she is ready to bring Lucas to him. On the other hand, Mayor Dan is still frustrated because he hasn't been able to make Kai pay for his crimes. Meanwhile, Lucas, Job, and Sugar discuss robbing the local casino owned by Benjamin Longshadow, the leader of the Kinaho tribe. Just then, Lucas receives a call from Carrie, who claims to have found a fence for their diamonds. Job tries to warn Lucas not to trust Carrie, stating that she is not the old Carrie they knew. However, Lucas is unwilling to listen to anyone when it comes to Carrie. She meets him in the parking lot, where she injects him with a sedative. It appears she has made the decision to hand him over to Rabbit. After placing him in a motel room, she cuffs him to the bedpost. Placing the diamonds on the table and gagging Lucas, she leaves the room leaving Lucas for Rabbit. On the other hand, Deputy Emmett is purchasing pregnancy tests at a drugstore when he encounters two robbers in the act of robbing the cashier. Upon noticing Emmett, the robbers become nervous. Witnessing the cashier reaching for something from below, one of the robbers shoots him dead. Emmett attempts to calm them down, but one of them points his pistol at his head. As Emmett starts praying, the duo decides to leave the drugstore. Initially, Emmett reports the incident to his colleagues via the radio, and then begins chasing the robbers. The criminals, Lance and Nathan, attempt to flee, 
but our officer continues pursuing them. Fatigued, Lance takes a school teacher, Janie Kendall, hostage, and shoots Emmett, injuring his arm. Unbeknownst to them, Janie Kendall is the wife of Mayor Dan Kendall. In addition to Janie, Lance, and Nathan also take several students hostage, including Deva, who were spending their Saturday in detention. Soon, the police arrive, and the incident garners media attention. On the other hand, Lucas is doing his best to free himself in the motel. He attempts to use a ballpoint tip to open the cuffs, but all his efforts prove futile. While struggling, he watches the news featuring Deva inside the high school, where a student managed to record the video of the robbers. Desperate to save Deva, Lucas works frantically to free himself before Rabbit's arrival. Soon, Rabbit arrives at the motel, but as Olek and he enters the room, they are shocked to find no one inside except handcuffs covered in blood. It turns out that Job is the one who arrived in time and freed Lucas. However, in response to Lance and Nathan's request, a car is organized for their getaway. In return, they agree to let go of four students. When Beatty, Deva's friend, refuses to depart without her, a scuffle breaks out. Beatty kicks Lance in the groin and lands a punch on his face. Seizing the chance, the pair dashes into the school building, with Lance in hot pursuit. When Lucas reaches the school entrance, Carrie is taken aback seeing him. After Brock briefs him, Lucas opts to enter the school on his own. Agent Dean attempts to stop him, but Lucas insists he stay out of the way. With hands raised, Lucas joins Nathan inside, aiming to start a conversation. Closing in on Nathan, he swiftly seizes control of his pistol, firing a fatal shot to his chest. Nathan is instantly killed. The students and Janie dash out of the school for safety in the wake of Nathan's demise. Meanwhile, Deva and Beatty are still fleeing from Lance. After catching up with Deva, Lance glances at Nathan's lifeless body and is visibly shocked. As Lucas arrives with a pistol in hand, Lance takes Deva hostage, threatening her life. Amidst the chaos, Lucas signals Deva to duck. Following the cue, Lucas takes down Lance with shots to the head and chest, ending his threat. Lucas successfully ensures the safety of all hostages in the rescue mission. However, the situation takes a turn for the worse when news channels broadcast the incident, showing Carrie and Lucas's faces. Having seen the news, Rabbit now knows Carrie and Lucas's location. Upstairs, Lucas discovers Carrie waiting for him. Conflicted, he instinctively draws his gun, but instead of a confrontation, Carrie embraces him. She willingly offers herself to him, and after 15 years, Lucas and Carrie reunite intimately once again. The following morning, Carrie prepares to depart, but Lucas pleads with her to stay. However, Carrie responds that the woman he once knew is now gone. When Lucas questions if Deva is his child, Carrie confesses and reveals she married Gordon to provide a home for their daughter. Before leaving, she implores Lucas to abandon Banshee for good, stating that if he truly loves her, he will do so. If not, she threatens to end his life herself. As Carrie heads towards her car, an unwelcome guest, Olek, intervenes. Pointing a gun at her, he instructs Carrie to get into the trunk. Carrie complies, but before Olek can take her away, he is stopped by Lucas. After securing Olek to a pole in his room, Lucas reassures Carrie, promising to confront Rabbit before any harm can befall them. Yet, Carrie is gripped by fear. Convinced that Rabbit's discovery means danger for all of them, fearing he will not hesitate to take their lives. Spotting Rebecca outside the apartment, Lucas intercepts her before she witnesses the chaos upstairs. Claiming to be preoccupied, he suggests giving her a ride to divert her attention. It's during this ride that Rebecca opens up to Lucas, recounting how her family expelled her and disowned her, for possessing items her father had warned her to avoid, such as magazines and makeup. As they talk, Rebecca kisses Lucas, and this intimate encounter is observed by Clay. Kai's right-hand man. On the flip side, Oleg manages to free himself from the cuffs. A fierce and deadly battle erupts between him and Carrie, each showcasing extraordinary combat skills in a bid to overcome the other. Carrie attempts to strike Oleg with a sharp piece of wood, but Oleg swiftly seizes her hand, turning the tables by stabbing her with the same makeshift weapon. As he tries to return her to the car, Carrie retrieves the wooden piece from her abdomen and retaliates, stabbing Olek. The intense struggle leaves both of them critically injured, sprawled on the ground in pain. At that moment, Lucas arrives, shocked to discover Carrie lying injured amidst a pool of blood. Swiftly, he transports her to the hospital, where she is rushed into surgery. When Gordon gets wind of the incident, he hurries to the hospital, holding Lucas accountable for Carrie's condition. He believes that ever since Lucas arrived in the town, 
Carrie has been acting oddly, Lucas counters, explaining that Carrie was attacked in front of his apartment, prompting him to assist her. Despite Lucas's explanation, Gordon remains skeptical. The doctor successfully conducts the surgery and assures Gordon that his wife is now in stable condition. Meanwhile, Kai confronts Rebecca, labeling her a whore for having a relationship with Lucas. He demands her departure, but Rebecca apologizes, emphasizing that her uncle is the only family she has left. Looking at the pictures of Carrie's newfound family in life, Rabbit gears up for a large-scale action in Banshee. He quickly mobilizes his men and heads to the town. On the flip side, Kai, accompanied by his new assistant Rebecca, approaches Alex Longshadow, the new chief of the Kinaho tribe. Despite a prior deal between Kai and Alex's father, Benjamin Longshadow, Alex expresses his desire to pursue the project independently. Kai attempts to remind Alex of the agreement with his father, but Alex remains steadfast in wanting to work on his own terms. Demonstrating his authority, Kai blows a whistle, prompting an immediate evacuation of workers from the construction site. Olek has met his demise, and Sugar and Job have managed his remains. Concerned for his friend's safety due to Rabbit, Lucas instructs them to steer clear of him. Meanwhile, Carrie, upon regaining consciousness, removes her IVs and nasal cannula, attempting to leave the bed. Gordon advises her to rest, but Carrie insists their children's lives are at risk. Despite Gordon's inquiries, Carrie stays silent, emphasizing it's not the time for questions. As they reach home, Carrie takes control of the vehicle, heading straight to Max's school. She rushes to his class, but he's not there. Glancing out the window, relief washes over her as she spots Max playing in the playground. However, her joy is short-lived when she sees Rabbit approaching Max frantically. She races downstairs, but by the time she reaches, Max and Rabbit have vanished. The police become involved in the situation, drawing the attention of Agent Dean. Addressing all the deputies, he makes it clear that they are to report to him until Max is safely returned. Left with no other choices, Lucas turns to Kai for assistance. However, before he can make his request, Kai questions Lucas about his relationship with Rebecca. Surprised, Lucas learns that Rebecca is Kai's niece. When he admits to the connection, Kai becomes infuriated, resulting in a physical altercation between the two. Initially, Kai appears to have the upper hand, but Lucas eventually gains control. Both sustain injuries. After venting his frustration, Kai asks Lucas about the situation, and Lucas explains, and Kai agrees to help. Later, Rabbit confronts Lucas at the police station, declaring it will be their final encounter. As Rabbit leaves, Lucas scans the station anxiously, only to hear the ominous sound of guns being cocked. In desperation, he quickly ducks for cover. Rabbit's gunmen unleash a barrage of gunfire on the police station, leaving Lucas in a dangerous situation. He takes cover behind a car but realizes that escaping the incoming bullets won't be sustainable for long. A figure approaches, and to Lucas's surprise, it's Kai, who has eliminated the shooters. Kai informs Lucas that he now owes him a favor. The next day, deputies and the FBI arrive at the chaotic scene, seeking answers from Lucas. However, Lucas responds that he knows nothing. Lucas is determined to save Max, but Agent Dean reminds him he's no longer part of the case. Hearing this, Lucas approaches Brock and hands over his sheriff badge, resigning from the job. Meanwhile, Job applies his hacking skills in an attempt to discover Max's whereabouts, but the efforts prove fruitless. The CCTV footage reveals Rabbit's men entering the town, but they are not seen leaving, indicating they are still in town. Amid this, Sugar and Job are joined by Carrie, who now collaborates with them, as they form a team to rescue her son. Simultaneously, Lucas contacts Rabbit, proposing to surrender in exchange for the safety of Carrie and her family. Rabbit accepts the offer, leading to a swap where Lucas turns himself in for Max. Max is safely returned home, but the exchange results in Lucas being knocked unconscious. While Sugar and Job continue their efforts to determine Lucas's whereabouts, Gordon arrives at the bar to update Carrie about Max's return. Carrie quickly deduces that Lucas has traded himself for Max. Job successfully tracks down Lucas's phone, pinpointing his location at the metalworks. The team mobilizes to rescue Lucas, but on their way, they encounter Brock, who senses that something is wrong. With no other choice, Carrie discloses the details of Lucas's abduction to Brock. Recognizing Lucas as one of their own, Brock decides to lend his assistance in the rescue mission. On the flip side, Rabbit subjects Lucas to torture, aiming to inflict maximum suffering. Meanwhile, 
The rescue team reaches the metalworks. As the others approach the front, Carrie stealthily infiltrates to divert Rabbit's army's attention. A fierce fight ensues, and both of the sides get injured. Brock and the crew find themselves overwhelmed, but Carrie arrives just in time to take control swiftly. However, their troubles persist as Rabbit's henchmen appear with a rocket launcher. Despite Brock's injuries, he manages to aim at the shooter, killing him, and causing the rocket launcher to unintentionally target other henchmen, turning the tide in favor of Carrie's crew. Upon hearing the explosion, Rabbit decides to slit Lucas's throat to bring an end to his life. However, just in time, Carrie infiltrates the hall, diverting the guard's attention. Seizing the opportunity, Lucas overpowers the guard, and as Carrie dispatches him, she turns her gun on her own father. Rabbit questions why she's taking such action, because he has already forgiven her and spared her family's life. Carrie firmly responds that she hasn't forgiven him. With determination, she shoots Rabbit twice, bringing an end to his life. With Lucas successfully rescued, other law enforcement units arrive on the scene. Agent Dean investigates but discovers no traces of anyone. Rabbit has vanished, leaving only a photograph of himself and Carrie behind. Hurt by Carrie's decision to choose Lucas over her family, Gordon leaves the town with his children. Mayor Dan Kendall sits on a ledge within the casino construction site, contacting his wife. Outside, Kai and Rebecca arrive, and Kai expresses his desire not to kill Alex, but to impart a lesson. He hands Rebecca a phone and instructs her to call a number. When she dials, a phone attached to a bomb within the construction site rings, leading to the casino's explosion and the mayor's death. Simultaneously, the police discover the buried bodies of the real Lucas Hood and the two thugs, Sugar Buried. As the investigation unfolds, the question arises, will Lucas get caught this time, or will he find a way, as always, to manipulate the situation in his favor? 